Okay, today, let's slow down. I'm tired. Larry season kicks my butt. I need my camera system back. Um, I was out twice last night. Um, dad. lamb. She had a ram lamb. It was a single and so it was big, which is good. But um, she I don't know. It didn't get up and walk right away. It must have been really crammed in there. I think she had a little bit of a hard delivery but it couldn't have been that hard because we got there. I checked first. I always get there to check to make sure nobody's, you know, having trouble, things like that. And then we went and we sorted off a few of the sheep to go back into the second uh, lot because they didn't need to be on that much grain, so I need to back them down. And then by that time, when I came back, she was down on the ground pushing hard. So um, I pulled, it had two hooves and a nose out and it was tough to get out, but we got it. Wasn't breathing like right away. I had to, you know, kind of uh, get it excited a little and clean its mouth off. So we did good there. Um, I gave it one ounce of colostrum just because um, I wasn't gonna be hanging around for too long to make sure that it got up and nursed. So, went back later and it still hadn't even gotten up. Its back legs weren't really tracking very well. That had her upset and it's like they decide it ain't gonna go because that yesterday morning, Reba, who I didn't even think was pregnant, she didn't make an udder at all. She ended up giving birth to a preemie and it just was too weak to really breathe. It seemed like its issue, but its belly was a little bit swollen too so I don't know if it was like she just didn't have enough I don't know she was young you um so it didn't make it it was live when it was born but then it didn't make it um so she just kind of walked off and left it like wasn't getting up as fast as she would have liked it to I guess so maybe there's some instinct in them that it if it don't happen within a certain amount of time call it quits I don't know because that kind of seemed like what this you did however I did move the baby from the original location she had it and she just had afterbirth mode it was like a puddle of water uh, she had dug a nest down in the hay and um, had the baby and then it, she was trying to dry it off but there was just so much fluid so I picked it up and moved it over to a dry area and she was still out with the rest of the sheep. I don't know why I really didn't move her in a stall, but I didn't. Um, so then when I moved it, she was okay with that. She continued cleaning it, but I didn't want to put, oh, it looked like it had been under some stress in the womb. It had already gone to the bathroom, you know, so it had all that yellowish color all over it. So I wanted her to clean that. Um, and I read where that meant that that yellowish color means that, that it was in some distress inside the womb. So like sometimes you'll have one that's yellowish and the other one is fine. So apparently maybe the one went to the bathroom or something went on. And so the, I wanted the mom to clean it up before I put the poke on. So I went ahead and came back here and waited a couple hours, went back, no, she had not, uh, she'd kind of like given up on it. She was walking around checking all the other baby lambs that were in the bed to see if they were hers, but they weren't. I mean, so she didn't act right. So I took her in the stall and I locked her in with it last night. I gave it another two ounces because I was like, okay, she's ignoring this thing. She's backing away from it. I mean, I know that they back away to try to get them to follow, but it couldn't follow. It just wouldn't walk with its back feet. 
So I locked it in there, gave it two more ounces. So total it had three throughout the night. And uh, then this morning I went 5 a.m. or so and still have not got nothing, seemed to have nursed at all. And so, but it was strong. I mean, he was standing up and so then I uh, kind of made it get up and nurse her. And then she kind of acted like she was a little bit happy with that. Um, and started standing for it. So I'm hoping when I go back again here about eight, that he'll be strong and aggressive enough that um, the two of them will bond. The one thing I did, haha, this is a new one. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't always happen, but I had a coat from one of the other lambs there and I put that coat on it and I think she smelled the other lamb on that coat and mm -mm, wasn't her baby lamb. So now I need to make sure that I wash the coats and have them ready before um, I put them on a new lamb. So the new lamb cannot have any of the other lambs smell, apparently. Maybe this is just this mom, but she did not, I don't know. She just didn't seem to want the lamb. And maybe that's not anything to do with the coat that smelled like another lamb or not. But, um. So I found her afterbirth and I went ahead and put her afterbirth on top of the coat and it stuck there all night. It even dried a little bit. Um, so tried that. It didn't seem to really sink her with this little lamb. And um, so this morning I took the fat off because it was getting crispy. And, but she, she did nudge it a little when it was nursing and things like that. So there's hope there. I don't want to bottle feed the lamb. Oh, that's going to be a nightmare. I'm going to have to milk to get the milk. It's a ram lamb though. So I don't know. I may be able just to purchase. I don't want to give it formula. I really don't. But I'm going to sell it anyway. Maybe formula is okay. But the lambs that I raise on formula, the does that I've tried to keep at, I'm just not happy with the results from that formula. I don't know why. I don't know if it's freeze-dried, regular milk, what it is. It's something I'm just not comfortable with. So I don't want to have to bottle feed it. I just don't. Um, if I have to, I will, but I just hate it. It's draining. It's a lot of work, especially just for one. <laughs> so all the other lambs are doing pretty good Paige our first time you she seems to be having a little bit of trouble feeding these well they're little pigs probably feeding her too enough to keep them satisfied they're kind of like wanting to snatch off of the other um, use and steal and that happens a lot some of these first time use don't milk hard enough to keep them as full as they would like to be not that they need to be that full there are no, they're they're eating some hay and stuff like that so, so i'm glad about that um the rest of them are doing pretty good so you can hear earl the donkey i think he's he's snitching on the neighbor lady he can see her when she's out there walking she walks down the tree line and <laughs> she's she said she made he makes him bray every morning. She said she he's ratting her out that she's out there. <laughs> she probably don't like being, you know, spied on like that. I don't know. Bees. Now you need attention. Yes. Your big one to stay on high. So so far that's the drama uh for the sheep. Uh, Tab, or Dander's giving me terrible time. So she's, she's going to have triplets. She's going into twin lamb disease. She's not eating really well. Um, I've been giving her the buffer. I've been giving her power punch. Power punch has really turned her around. She's acts great now. She's got bantamine. Um, she's got the calcium. I mean, I haven't injected her with calcium, but I'm putting the calcium out. And she seems to be taking a little bit of calcium. Dander has a huge udder. And I think what I'm noticing with those girls, um, with these huge, huge udders, there's just a huge drain there right at that initial startup with the colostrum. And um, the lay triplet lambs, that 
uh, it's just a drag on their calcium supply when they're producing that much calcium because their bags are just phenomenal, like a gallon in there. Um, so I'm watching them super close and hopefully we'll get dander through this. I'm really nervous about her. She's, she's one of my best use. I do not want to lose her for anything. Thought, I thought about inducing her, but man, that worries me too. I think because I, I've lost Dottie because I just wasn't aggressive enough and <clears throat> I don't want to have that happen with dander. Um, if it happens with dander, and I screw up and don't induce her, and I lose her and the lambs, the next one, I'm just gonna do it, uh, because the next one's probably gonna be Flora. Flora may have trouble. She's super fat you. Um, and so, that could cause her some major issues. Dander's super fat you. Now, Fancy, okay, let's talk about Fancy. We did Fancy's debut. Okay, Fancy is the one who always has the tapeworms. So Fancy is not overweight. So I think Fancy is going to have no problems. Now, I did power punch her yesterday just thinking I she's <laughs> she looks so miserable. Oh my gosh, she's huge. Um, and her udder, Fancy's udder is always huge. Um, she's like, she's just tower walk. Like I said, her udder's driving me crazy, but they're good milkers. And so here's the deal with Audrey. And uh, Audrey was a thinner you, and she's got a massive udder. So um, the thinner you seem to be pulling through possibly better. I don't know. Uh, gotta keep a close eye on Dander. She's definitely not eating like she should. Um, I've switched her just to straight corn and I've switched my feeding to three times a day for those girls, just to bump them a little bit more when their stomachs can't handle as much going in. Um, so there's that, this is just constant. And I'm checking dander several times throughout the day. I just, you never know when they're gonna drop these things. And when you think you're close, you're not. So, um, that's kind of my morning. Oh, it's going. Oh, we've got, I think, 12 more. So, we got 13 lambs now. Safe and on the ground, doing really well. Except for Daph, who's kind of not feeding hers yet. Um, I'm expecting Dander any minute to have them. Then we still have Taft. Who's young? She's gonna be a scary one. Uh, she's looking huge, so probably twins. I got her on super nutrients, so hopefully, and she's eating great. So watching her, but she's she's a small you. Um, we've got Flora, who's probably gonna have triplets. So Taft, Flora, um, Curly Sue. Probably going to be looking at a big single out of her. Dander, who's going to have triplets. Um, there should be six left for all the daft. So, there's one that I'm not thinking of. Because daft went. So, I had six, so that leaves me with five. So, I can't think of who number five is to go yet. Um, but, if everybody has... Two, that's going to give us 10 more lambs. Some of them are going to have three, I'm sure of it. If I don't lose them, <sighs> sometimes you wonder if it's worth it. No, I know it's not worth it. I'm going to put way more into this than <laughs> I'll ever get back out. But I mean, in my opinion, but the knowledge, knowledge is critical. Um, I'm producing my own food as well. That's critical to uh, help keep you healthy. Um, so you got to add that in there. But this is crazy. Um, I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, i got to fine tune, fine tune. But the problem is you only do this like once a year. So you, sometimes you kind of forget from year to year. So that's why if I do these videos, I can go back and rewatch them and listen to key points that I'm pointing out that I need to be mindful of so I can be a lot more 
So this three times day feeding, I think is really gonna help. I like the idea of it. Uh, so why I didn't think of it earlier, who knows? But normally I just pin these girls off and then they would eat just a little bit of grain here and there throughout the day. I'm running out of pen. I need to pull out. I've been waiting till they're a week old, the lambs. They're in the lambing pen in their own little house till they're a week old. I see that, you know, the little lambs really start getting strong after about a week. I think I can trust them out in the big pen with the other lambs who are getting kind of be bullied and the other mom sheep. Um, so I gotta get back and look to see when some of the other girls had the lambs and maybe be pulling them out of the pens and go ahead and put my other moms that are still yet to have babies in these pens and see how it goes. I'm getting close to the end, thank goodness. It hasn't been that bad. It seems like for some reason this year, I have not worried nearly as much. Last year was brutal, but I was bottle feeding lambs as well. That's the brutal part to get them crazy and get up every two hours and get their bottles made and go out and feed them. And that's, that's hell. That's hell. That's all I gotta say. There are people who don't know it. I guess when you have a baby, you kind of get the feeling of what it's like. Um, so that's probably why I've managed so well this year. Um, not being so so strung out is that I haven't had to bottle feed yet. So I'm pretty sure this new one I'm not gonna have to either. So praise God for that. Uh, even though I've lost, dang it, Dottie's the one that's killing me the most. The others, okay, kind of expected it. Um, I thought maybe them the mews were a little young for breeding. But it's hard to tell when you're supposed to wait till like 70% their adult size. And I'm like, you know, with all that wool, like, it's hard to tell. I'm thinking, I don't know. Well, I learned my lesson. Okay. Um, everything else seems to be going real good. I hate to say that, but now we've got these, I think, I need to track it down, pileated woodpeckers. Oh, they're cacklers. They cackle a lot, they seem to, and uh, they're tearing the heck out of the trees. They're putting these huge holes in the side of the trees and driving the dogs crazy because there's this dead tree in the front yard that I think they've really been working at, and there's these pieces of chunks of wood all over the ground. And Ava is just always constantly at that tree looking up there like something's going up there. I thought maybe it was a raccoon because there's a big hole there that something can go in and nest. So I thought the raccoon might be going in there to have its babies or something. But now I see all these chips around the bottom of it. And I think it's some woodpeckers going in there now. And see the dogs don't like it because she's been feeding them carcasses of deer that I find on the side of the road. And um, the crows want to come and eat their carcasses so oh, they hate birds well now we got these woodpeckers they see up these trees so now the dogs are focused almost completely on these birds that are wanting to get their carcasses they're still doing a good job guarding the sheep thank goodness but <laughs> Ava she's not much help she's the food supply for our dog right now but the birds don't eat their carcasses so if it isn't one thing, it's another. I'm getting through it every day, but uh, it seems like there's a new battle on the horizon all the time. Um, <laughs> you never know what to expect. I'm gonna keep my eye out on these. I think they're these pileated woodpeckers. I don't know, I've just seen one fly across the road and all I'm saying is that thing was huge. And I seen its red head and it looks about the size of a, a wood duck, I think. So I got on YouTube and was watching some videos on them. And <clears throat> once I spy one today, I'll probably see one. You can hear them, they, they sound like they cackle. And so they must be in the mating season or something, baby, I don't know, I'll see if I can 
find one and I'll take a picture and see if I can tell if that's the type of woodpecker that it is. It's for sure woodpecker. We got these walnut trees and man, they put a huge couple notches in the side of it. Uh, I don't, I don't know why he's pecking on a, seem like a good, good live tree, but it is. That's all my drama for today. Uh, I hope to get some rest at some point. Yesterday I was out all day with the sheep and the bees. I fed the bees. The bees are so far doing really well. Um, I just gotta keep, I gotta make sure they keep getting sugar. They're going through it fast, but uh, I think the maples just came out, so that'll help bring in some nectar and pollen too. Um, so I can't, I don't have much to complain about as far as how things are going. I mean, it's, it was going to be rough and we knew that just starting out, but I don't know, this is going to take years to develop this. And man, I don't know if I got it in me. I mean, the energy just constantly, the warm weather is going to help a lot for me anyway. I love the warm weather. We're going to do a lot of wood cutting this year. So that means a lot of clearing. But I don't know how much fence we'll get built, but every little bit will keep adding to our progress. Um, I've started the second portion here with my hat. This is the inner lining. I'm going to do a double layer hat. So <clears throat> this, see it's smaller. So this I'm a little afraid that it's going to be too big. This hat, the bigger one, I think it's going to be too big. So I'm going to have to maybe take it all the way down apart and start all over again on this outer one. That's okay. I mean, that's part of knitting. Um, you do it just because you love to knit, not because you just want to get a product done, I guess. Um, so I'm not real happy with the external part. Uh... I'm going to continue going on the internal. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm spinning more yarn, too, because I don't think I'm going to have enough to do an inner and an outer because I'm almost out right now. Although, if I make this one smaller, I might come up with some more yarn, but I'm still going to need more. I know that for sure. So, this is what we are doing every day just to stay productive. Make sure that we're putting in a couple rows of knitting on our hat. And I'm still spinning two row lags of yarn a day. Um, and that's how I'm just trying to be more productive, more self-sufficient. I mean, I'm, if I even just make a hat, one, I'm keeping my knitting skills up um, because there's tons of things that I can do with the knitting skill and then my spinning skill and keeping that up um, I'm utilizing the product off of the alpacas right now but it will be used on the sheep too um, and even though I don't do a whole lot uh, as long as I do a little every day it adds up um, and so that's what I'm going to try to continue to do. And then I'll have different, you know, things to show for it. Like I said, I'll have another hat. So I'll have my brown hat. I have two brown hats that I've done. And then I'll have this black hat. And uh, then, I don't know, I'll start on something else. Whether it'll be a sweater. I think I might do another sweater. I've done one sweater that was my own from my sheep. I'll have to locate that. Wow, it was a merino from my own merino sheep. And I spun and I turned it into yarn and then I knit the sweater and it turned out really good in my opinion. Um, so I wanna continue doing a little bit of that here and there. And then eventually maybe make all my own stuff. I don't know. We'll see how far I get with it after I get super busy. If I can keep up with just two row lags a day. <laughs> Whether it's um, 
raw fiber or wash fiber or things like that. Um, I'll just keep going. I'll just try to keep going. Now, I don't know if I'm going to venture into this milking thing or not. It's a ton of work. A ton of work. Um, I don't know how far down that rabbit hole I want to go. Even more with making the butter. I love the butter. Sheep butter is fantastic. Um, the cheeses, I have not got perfected yet. I don't know if I'm going to have to go for a real cheese making class or what. I mean, it's okay. But for some reason, it's just not, mm, I just don't think it's turning out right. I want it more like a creamy consistency. And mine seems to be more kind of a drier. So I need to kind of nail that down. Problem with cheese is, you know, you gotta wait six months to a year to get, you know, complete aging on it and get those better consistencies and flavors possibly. But I almost want to just go take a really you know, good cheese making class so I can nail this and then maybe it'll give me the drive to want to milk to be able to make those cheeses. Right now what's turning out, I'm just like, meh, I could live without them. So that's a little disappointing, but every once in a blue moon, I'll get one that's just fantastic. But it's like, man, if I'm going to waste so much in the process of getting that one, mm -mm, not willing to do it. I'm just not willing to do it. Milking is so much work, you wouldn't believe us. It's, and it's sad that so few people do it that it just really becomes that much more of a burden because there's no one to help, no one, you know, to do it right. And these commercial operations, I don't know. I know it's just, a lot of farm people are angry over that too. So there I got some knitting done for the day. And now I'll, I'll do some spinning probably this afternoon. And uh, keep checking these sheep. Dander's going to drive me insane. Because you could check every hour and that would wear me out. So hopefully everything's born live, healthy, happy. Take it easy on me, but that doesn't seem to be the way that my world works. So, okay, there's my update. Long-winded. Hopefully you enjoy just sitting, watching me knit, listening to my woes. Because um, it seems to be that I don't, I don't remember too much of the good stuff. Move on. <laughs> and the bad ones linger. Um... But it seems that I learned the most from the challenges anyway. Um, but what I'll do is I'll start maybe trying to write down some of the positive notes. And these have been my positive notes right now. They're doing really well. So that's making me super happy. <sighs> that's my saving grace right now. Um, so that's how we'll end that positive notes effect there. And the BG. Huh? You coming to see me? She's like a really skittish dog. But every once in a blue moon, she'll just decide she's coming over to say hi. Are you smiling? Whoa, she's not going to let you say hi, huh? But this dog has been turned from a dog that would never come in the house. You have to pretend like I don't notice her. To a dog that never wants to get out of the house now. Come here. Oh, you don't want to be touched. Does it tickle? It tickles. It tickles so much. Oh, my gosh, she's a toad. So now she would never let you hold her. Now she'll let you hold her. She's a lover now. She loves the inside. Don't you? Hmm? She's doing really good with the move. You know, she was one that we thought wouldn't be able to handle it. But now, oh my, she's a city dog. You're a city dog now, aren't you? Inside all the time. Oh, such a city dog. Oh, such a city dog. She's a princess now. And she never would let you hold her. Never liked it. Never wanted to be in the house. She hated it in the house. Scared to death wouldn't come in no matter what. Couldn't even catch her. Oh, now you love it in here, huh? I 
think it's a big enough area she can go and have her own space. She's got her own rug there with her own beds. Uh -huh. Now we gotta be careful putting you down, don't we? Don't want to scare you. We gotta go slow. Oh, so proud of bees. River bees. So proud of her. Oh, slow down, slow down. Good girl. 